Hello and welcome to a direct talk here on Tigray Television. Today we're joined by Marasat Sahaye, a political, a seasoned political analyst here on the studio, and we'll be talking about Tigray's political future. Thank you very much for joining us here on Direct Talk. Thank you for having me. All right, moving on to my first question. Uh, Marasa, you've been a vocal member of the resistance since Abiy Ahmed's I mean, ascendance to power in 2018, and you are a seasoned political analyst and a member of Tigray's election commission. And that uh, spearheaded the Tigray's election in 2020, just months ahead of the start of the conflict. I believe you are in an ideal position to articulate the demands of the resistance. How do you describe it to someone with limited knowledge of the ongoing conflict? Uh, thank you. Um, uh, today, uh, Tigray uh, has been waging, uh, struggling against uh, genocidal war since the coming of Abiy Ahmed. Uh, the coming of Abiy Ahmed power is simply uh, signals the resurrections of assimilationist politics in Ethiopia and regional and international um, supporters that, uh, that challenges the federal establishment, that challenges the 27 years of development, peace and stability. And at uh, the moment of this political crisis, the Tigrayan people and its leadership were targeted and the whole mobilization was against Tigray and its leadership and Tigray was the first in its, uh, in, in its uh, resistance against Abiy Ahmed. Uh, Tigray has a reason to oppose Abiy Ahmed's political establishment as well as the Amhara expansionist uh, political rhetoric and his uh, regional international alliances. The reason was that Tigray has been the land of resistance, the land of uh, civilization, resistance, sovereignty in the Ethiopian political framework. And Tigray has been uh, sacrificing its uh, martyrs for, the, uh, for uh, the right to self-determination, election and development. And when the coming of Abiy Ahmed, he wants to establish a military government, a type of military government and democratic government. And he wanted to reverse conditional order and uh, the, the federal uh, multinational systems, and the Tigray people were waging uh, phased resistance. Uh, at the beginning, there was uh, a legal and political resistance against Abiy Ahmed, and the people of Tigray were continuing their demonstrations, calling and requesting that uh, the, the conditional order should be respected, federalism should be respected, the right to self-determination of people's in, uh, nations and nationalities should be respected because this constitution is the only legal instrument that recognizes Tigray's self-determination right as well as uh, the other nations and nationalities so that we can collectively together create uh, democratic and stable Ethiopia. But this legal and political struggle was challenged by Abiy Ahmed and his supporters and Tigray became a victim and the uh, legal and resistance, uh, legal and political resistance was transformed into a genocidal war. The genocidal war was uh, waged by Isaiah Safwarki, the expansion of Amhara elites, as well as Abiy Ahmed. But Tigray has a reason for the 2020 election. There are legal reasons, political reasons, and security reasons. The legal reason was clear. According to the FDRA constitution, government should be elected because elections are considered as expression of popular sovereignty. And Tigray was requesting that in Tigray government should be elected and election is considered as, a, as an expression of self-determination, popular sovereignty. So it was a simple reason that having an election is simply legitimizing an elected government, extending the term of the Tigray regional uh, government. And it was a regional council, an election for regional council within the framework of Tigray's sovereign uh, uh, power. Uh, the second reason was the political reason. The political reason was simple. Tigray was conducting that election simply to reject all forms of centralization, assimilations, emerging militarism and fascism. Uh, emerging militant movement which contributes to the destabilization of the region. So that the political reason of the election was simply, it was not only election, but also a kind of referendum that Tigray 
was calling that yes for self-determination, yes for elected government, no for any forms of uh, assimilationist government, military government, fascist government that undermines the constitutional rights of the people of Tigray. Uh, so it was a referendum for uh, self-determination and elected government. But the security reason is also important. You know, the people of Tigray was watching the political dynamics in Ethiopia. Abiy Ahmed and his supporters are trying to mobilize their, uh, all forms of political and military movements against Tigray. So that having an elected government was considered as having an elected government to defend Tigray from uh, regional as well as from national aggressions. Uh, aggression against ISIS as well as aggression coming from the Amhara elites and this, uh, Abiy Ahmed's uh, aggression. So that the election had the legal reason, security reason, as well as political reason. So it was a successful reason because, because of that election, Tigray has an elected government, and this elected government has led the uh, anti-genocide war and mobilized the whole people of Tigray and its political, the political organizations uh, uh, in Tigray so that the government is leading the anti-genocidal war that Tigray is facing today. All right. So, um, moving on into my uh, next question, uh, for example, I mean, have these demands remained, uh, the ones you've laid out well, uh, remained the same since the start of the conflict in November 2020, and have they evolved in some sense, or what do you believe has been an important factor in redefining these questions? Yeah, uh, Tigray has historical questions as well as questions emerged after the genocidal war. The historical question is, Tigray has been fighting for uh, self-determination, self-rule, and shared rule within the fe federal framework of Ethiopia. Tigray has been the land of resistance, not only against the Derg regime, against Abiy Ahmed, but also against feudalism, against international aggressions. And the fundamental question for Tigray was, Tigray should enjoy the right to self-rule, self-administration and Tigray's territorial integrity should be respected within the framework of uh, a federal uh, democratic Ethiopia. Uh, but, uh, you know, Tigray was leading in the 27 years uh, democracy and development endeavors. But the coming of Abiy Ahmed is simply a signal that the reversal of the democratic framework, the federal framework, and the resurrections of uh, neo-fascist, neo neo-militarism and assimilation political system. Then after the genocidal war, Tigray's historical questions evolved into uh, some fundamental issues that should be respected. In the first place, the historical question is Tigray has to find itself. Tigray is claiming its glorious historical uh, position. Tigray is trying to uh, sustain its uh, territorial integrity, po uh, political establishment, as well as self rule. But later, with the coming of the genocidal war that affects every uh, uh, Tigray, and the questions are evolved that everyone tries to challenge the political establishment. Are we members of the Ethiopian federal state? Because the, fe the Ethiopian federal state is waging a genocidal war against Tigray. This is a new phenomenon, and this is denial and betrayal against the people of Tigray, because Ethiopia was leading this, uh, the Abiy Ahmed is leading this genocidal war against its cultural and political heritage, against its sovereignty, because Abiy Ahmed has requested Isaias Aforke to commit genocide against Tigray, and also uh, he requested uh, Farmajo and other regional and inter international supporters, so that it has transformed the questions not only simply reclaiming its glorious past, not only simply enjoying self-determination rights, democracy and development, the genocidal war is triggering a new issue that Tigray needs to be uh, self-reliant. Uh, Tigray should have its own uh, defense system. Tigray should maintain its territorial integrity. Tigray should not uh, be as such um, sitting idle so that uh, to be represented by the Ethiopian government or the Ethiopian state. Now there are important questions emerging from the genocidal uh, war. For example, the issue of blockage creates that Tigray needs a new framework of 
engaging with international community, for example, having a safe humanitarian corridor. Uh, the aggressions, the aggressions waged by the axis of evil, Isaiah Safur, Amhara Elites, and Abi Ahmed, is demanding that Tigray should have a strong army so that it can withstand the encirclement and aggression. And the other issues are, you know, now everyone is clear that Tigray's destiny should be defined by referendum. So the whole resistance that the Tigrayans are waging this time is simply to create an environment conducive for the people of Tigray to decide on its future. That is through referendum. So the, the result of the referendum could be yes for statehood or um, remaining with the Ethiopian framework, but the people should say, they should have the right to say, the vote of confidence on uh, the current political establishment. That's why the questions, there are historical reasons that are, uh, that are resurrected themselves now. Uh, we were the home of civilization. We were, uh, Tigray was the home of resistance. But unfortunately, Tigray becomes the victim of the Ethiopian state, the uh, Eritrean state. Tigray was supporting Eritrean self-determination right. Tigray was uh, contributing its role in the making of modern Ethiopia, as well as in creating the 27 years of development and democracy. And finally, Tigray found itself that is a victim of genocide. Now, Isaias Aforki is already declared that game over uh, Mentara and the Amara elites, they are committed to erase Tigray from history, memory, and structure of the Ethiopian state. So now we are in a critical juncture that Tigray should define its future. And rethinking on its historical understanding of the Ethiopian state as well as the Eritrean states. So we need a new framework that secures Tigray's territorial integrity, that secures uh, Tigray's uh, humanitarian corridor, Tigray's existence within the Horn, and as well as uh, defining Tigray's uh, upcoming security and political uh, features. All right. Um, now, uh, would you say that the demands of the people of Tigray in this resistance and the, that of the political leadership are in line? What's your take on that? Yeah, uh, this time, I think I believe there is a consensus among the Tigrayans that we are in a different uh, time framework. Uh, you know, before the war, uh, there was these different views, those who believe that still Tigray is the founding uh, Tigray interests could be addressed within the framework of federal Ethiopia. And there are also groups who uh, organize themselves as a political party for independent of independent Republic of Tigray. Even there are also those who claim that we have to have uh, a normalized uh, normalized relationship with Eritrea and then uh, the Agassian Brotherhood. These were the divergent issues before the war. Now one thing becomes clear that the the Tagarus are clear this time that we should sketch a new political uh, establishment that the future of Tigray should be redefined. We have to rethink about our historical engagement in Ethiopia and Eritrea. And the role of the leadership is also critical. You know, the PLF was leading the uh, 17 years armed uh, leverage struggles. It played its role in uh, addressing the nationality question, class question, as well as the question of democracy within framework of greater Ethiopia. And now the PLF is also challenged by the failures of uh, the nation building and state formation project in Ethiopia and the, the coming of the assimilation forces to undermine the PLF's contribution, to dehumanize and criminalize the Tigray's contribution in Ethiopia. And uh, this, uh, in this case, the PLF is also challenged that it needs uh, rethinking on its political program as well as on its leadership on the future of Tigray. And there are also other political movements, political parties, elitists, activists, and all forms of Tigrayans that now we have to have an elite consensus on the future of Tigray. So that uh, I, ca I can say that there is a consensus among the Tagarus on the need of a new uh, political platform that defines the coming of Tigray. And the new Tigray will be totally different from the Tigray that we know before the war. 
So I believe that every Tigray is in line with the vision of a new Tigray, and that new Tigray will be, uh, in fact, it needs elite consensus, discussions, and it needs also a time that uh, a time that the Tigran, all Tigran should be uh, gathered and discuss on the political uh, values and issues of the coming Tigray. Okay. I'm, I'm sure it's difficult to come to an objective analysis of this conflict as a Tigrawai, but how do you believe the demands you have laid out could be met? And do you believe there is a, a military and the capability and diplomatic skill to accomplish these ambitious objectives? Uh, yeah, I believe that uh, uh, we need to develop a new uh, political diplomatic framework that meets the new vision of Tigray. Uh, because we have no option. Uh, you know, uh, the Ethiopian state already, Avi Ahmed, declared genocide against Tigray. This, by implication, this means that Tigray is a stateless. There is no state that represents Tigray in the international community. Even the government is proud of being uh, imposing the de facto blockage on Tigray. So uh, Tigray needs a new engagement, a new, uh, needs to develop a new policy. For example, Tigray is not a state this time. It's a region within Ethiopia, but the Ethiopian government fails to represent Tigray. Not only that, the Ethiopian government invites Eritrea and other forces to commit genocide against Tigray. So Tigray is a unique case in world politics. So uh, what we need is Tigray should uh, develop a new political fr framework. For example, Tigray needs active uh, foreign policy engagement, reco recognizing that Ethiopia will not represent Tigray, uh, recognizing that the international community is not up to the expectation to save the guy from genocide as well as to save the guy from the continuing uh, blockage so what we need is we should not believe in uh, Tigray is part of Ethiopia uh, Tigray is a region because Tigray's issue becomes internationalized because of the genocide Tigray issue is so internationalized and Tigray is above and beyond Eritrea and Ethiopia so the Tigray government should think that there is a new uh, the need for the new political establishment, for example, new foreign policy establishment, a new military doctrine that defends Tigray from the incoming aggression, a new political form that convinces the international community that the Tigrayan people should exercise the right to self-determination through referendum. Uh, the, there needs the, uh, active involvement of uh, political parties, uh, civic societies, and non-state actors to lobby international communities to support Tigray's cause. So uh, Tigray is in a different political landscape, so that it could be premature to say that uh, Tigray has um, this uh, diplomatic and political capacity, but there is no way out, there is no way out instead of, uh, there is no way out, but to have a full-fledged foreign policy framework, security framework, as well as clear political orientations on the destiny of Tigray. Thank you. And do you believe an independent Tigray is viable? Yeah, I believe. Uh, Tigray is a viable for statehood. Uh, I have four reasons. The first reason is a historical reason. Tigray is one of the oldest civilizations in the world, endowed with uh, all civilization in its form. The only literate civilization, Tigray is the home of uh, those. Uh, religious sects, the three Judaism, Christian, and Muslim. Tigray has been uh, defending its territorial integrity through a continuous armed resistance from international aggressions as well as internal oppression. So Tigray is home of civilization. There are historical reasons for, for Tigray to be a state. You know, Tigray has been degenerating from the empire state of Aksum into uh, a region in today's Ethiopia. Tigray was an empire state, one of the, the oldest civilization. Even during the time of Johannes Tigray, I can say Tigray was a nation state during the time of colonialism. So there are solid historical reasons that Tigray could be uh, a state. The other one is Tigray has a huge experience of self-administration and self-rule. 
even during the time of war. During the 17 years armed resistance, Tigray was the only political entity in the Horn of Africa uh, with, with its own political establishment, whether it's democratic and democratic, feudalism or uh, Marxism. Tigray is the home of the political uh, center. And Tigray is the only entity in the Horn of Africa that survives colonialism and other forms of political change. You know, the, the regions in Ethiopia were simply the creations of the Federal Democratic Republic Constitution. Eritrea was created by colonialism. And Tigray has been the only region that survives colonialism and po uh, post-colonial political dynamics. So Tigray has a historical reason uh, and experience of self-administration self and self-rule. The other one is why Tigray is uh, visible for statehood is it's a failed project of Ethiopia's nation building is a reason for Tigray to be a state. You know, uh, the, PLF already, uh, the PLF had stated that Tigray's question can be addressed within the framework of federal multinational state. But after 27 years of a federal experiment, Ethiopia's nation building project has failed. And it becomes a, a liability for Ethiopia, uh, for Tigray. And Tigray becomes a victim of the federal establishment. Tigray becomes a victim of the assimilation policy. So Tigray's question cannot be addressed within the framework of greater Ethiopia. The other reason is, you know, Ethiopia and Eritrea, they committed genocide against Tigray. And one of the reasons for self-determination in international practice is, if the state fails to protect its citizens, if the state fa fails to provide democratic and security uh, goods to its citizens, the people who, are, who consider themselves as oppressed have the right to self-determination. Now Tigray is facing genocide. And genocide is simply an automatic reason for a statehood. That means a genocidal regime in Ethiopia makes Tigray stateless. Tigray is facing the genocidal atrocities. So we have no reason to stay within, uh, uh, within a genocidal state, a genocidal regime of Ethiopia. Because it's, it is not uh, only Abiy Ahmed that wages the genocide war against Tigray. The religious institutions, the institutions in Ethiopia, the House of Federation, the National Defense, and prominent individuals, scholars, they were supporting the genocide war against Tigray. So there is no reason to, for a Tigrayan to live under the Ethiopian state. So genocide could be the, sec the third reason for uh, the state war of Tigray. The fourth reason is new uh, interests are emerging in Tigray. This interest could be uh, the interest to reclaiming Tigray's glorious past. Tigray should c reclaim its glorious past for two reasons. In the first place, in order to search its history, its civilization, in order to develop its political and cultural uh, values and sell to international community. The other one is in order to defend itself from uh, regional and international aggressions. So the new vision of Tigray is everyone is happy to see a new state of Tigray because the international order is an order of states, not order of peoples. That's why Tigray becomes a victim. Tigray uh, was, mm, was happy to be part of Ethiopia, but unfortunately Tigray becomes a victim of this federal establishment as well as the unitary establishment. Now it is time for the Tigrayans to think that there must be a new development. That new development could be, we have already tested that. Uh, federal Ethiopia, a unitary Ethiopia, but it failed. Now, the only way out we have is to have a referendum and to establish a state of Tigray. And Tigray is the core of uh, civilization and uh, it has historical reasons, political reasons, security reasons, as well as a new aspiration of Tigray uh, are the sufficient precondition for a statehood. So Tigray is uh, a viable for a statehood. Okay. Mm. Uh, your graduate thesis mm. focus primarily on the Eritrean state and its political future. Firstly, what is your opinion on why the Eritrean state is so invested in the conflict in Tigray and Eritrea was not only heavily invested in terms of its military capabilities, but Eritrean soldiers are often described as having committed the most violent atrocities. 
Why do you think that is? Uh, there are also historical reasons and political reasons to this argument, you know. The historical reason is uh, Eritrea was created by colonialism. Eritrea was uh, the creation of Italian colonialism. Uh, but before the colonialism, uh, Tigray and Eritrea was one and the same. They had hist historical reasons. But it says Aforcus Eritrea is simply evolved from the Italian colonialism. He defined in his manifesto our struggle and discourse. Eritrea is created by Italy so that its nationalism is based on territorial nationalism. And its territorial nationalism is simply that it undermines Eritrea's relationship, cultural, historical, and economic relationship with Tigray. And Eritrea, it has a focus of statehood of Eritrea is totally antagonistic with Tigray. His policy is to become uh, a regional power in the Horn of Africa. Uh, in order to achieve this regional power in the Horn of Africa, it has a fork considered Tigray is uh, a problem, so that he wanted to eradicate Tigray from the map and eliminate the people of Tigray from the Horn in order to see a greater Eritrea in the Horn of Africa. Uh, so it has a fork is state of Eritrea is totally antagonistic with the Tigray's vision of uh, political aspirations. The reason is, uh, you know, Isaias considers the PLF as, as um, a junior partner during the armed struggles. When the PLF came into power and controlled the politics in Ethiopia, you know, Isaias Afurka's ambition was uh, contained. And after that, he waged uh, the war against Tigray in 1998. And he was also defeated by the war. And his ambition was uh, controlled. And he tried to uh, mobilize Ethiopian opposition forces against Tigray in order to achieve his intended goal of becoming the Israel of the Horn of Africa in terms of military aspect. Then he mobilized all Ethiopian opposition forces and he was trained uh, in Eritrea for the last 20 years. After the coming of Abiy Ahmed for Isaias, this was an, a new opportunity for him to wage a genocidal war against Tigray and to control to destabilize the Horn of Africa. Uh, and, and finally, uh, to see Isaias Afurkas Eritrea is expanding and transplanting into the whole region so that to become a king of the Horn of Africa. So uh, Isaias Afurki is, con uh, is considering Tigray as his problem of nation building. That's why he is waging a war against Tigray, simply to mark the border through war. Because Isaias is saying that if Tigray is politically and economically developed, so that the political development, economic development, and the positive attitude of Tigray towards Eritrea's self-determination is considered that an antithesis to Isaias Afork and the state of Eritrea. Now he's trying to, uh, if he's, uh, he's trying to uh, get Tigray out of this political equation, and he's also supporting the assimilation force of Amara, he's supporting Abu Yahmed, he's also mobilizing Farmajo in the name of regional security and greater Horn of Africa. Uh, so uh, the reason why Eritrea is engaging in this war is because er Isaias Eritrea's ambition is totally incompatible with Tigray's ambition, so that as long as Isaias is in power, Tigray will not be in peace. Because Isaias' foreign, pol uh, foreign policy is clear and simple destabilizing the Horn and uh, imposing a mafia state in the Horn region, extracting resources, and then um, he becomes antithesis to democracy, development, and stability in the region. That's why he came up with this project of uh, game over and political has in the Horn of Africa. So as long as Isaias is in power, Tigray will not be safe. So the, the only option for Tigray is either Isaias Afork should be eliminated uh, in fact, uh, not only eliminating, uh, we need to have a democratic Eritrea, to see a democratic Eritrea there. Because the political development in Eritrea directly or indirectly affects Tigray's political ambition, Tigray's interest. You know, all the aggressions, international and regional aggressions uh, throughout history coming from Eritrea, through Eritrea. The Italian uh, aggression, uh, even uh, during the 17 years armed struggle, Derg was considering Eritrea as military base and undermining Tigray. And this is the, there is the Addis Ababa Asmara alignment against Tigray. So at the end of the day, 
is Yasa Fork and Damara Ilis and Isaias, they want to see Tigray out of the map. That's why they are engaging in this genocidal war to control and eliminate Tigray. Because if he eliminates Tigray, he pretends, he believes that he will control the Horn of Africa. He will be the king of the Horn, he will extract the resource and destabilize the Ethiopian states so that Eritrea will be the only strong state in the region. Interesting. Um, what do you believe uh, will be the future of Eritrea uh, state after, say, as of uh, Now, uh, new political developments are emerging. Uh, ISAS is now recognized by international community, by everyone in the world that he's a destabilizer, a problem in the Horn of Africa, not only a problem to Eritrea, he becomes a problem to the region and Ethiopia, and it's a problem to international security. Uh, so there is a consensus among the international community that Isaias, there is no possibility for Isaias to reform its own state. He missed all the opportunities. Even uh, he shows that he, he is a determined anti-democracy uh, anti and regional destabilizer by showing that uh, he is supporting Abiy Ahmed and uh, to watch the genocidal war against Tigray and to destabilize the, the Ethiopian federal framework. So now it's clear that the fundamental problem in the Horn of Africa is ISIS. So there, there need to be a new uh, political framework. In the first place, how to remove ISIS from power. Then to give a chance for the Eritrean people to develop their own democratic political framework. Because the failure of democracy in Eritrea, the problem of uh, uh, nation building and state formation in Eritrea becomes a problem to Tigray and the whole. So Eritrea becomes a problem in the regional security complex. So it's better to remove ISIS Afwarki and then support the Eritrean democratic forces to develop their own uh, democratic process. Uh, and the international community should actively uh, support uh, the Tigray's cause as well as the, the cause of the democratic force of Eritrea. So the international community uh, has a responsibility to play its role in this regional uh, security framework because the Horn of Africa is one of the hot spots of world geopolitics in world politics. If the international community fails to support the great cause and the cause of the democratic Eritrean forces, Isasa Fork will continue to destabilize the region. A destabilized Horn of Africa will be, you know, we have an isolated state of uh, Eritrea. Almost uh, everyone uh, called Eritrea as the North uh, Quarry of Africa. We have also a collapsed state of Somalia, and Ethiopia is in a political crisis. Uh, there is a problem, a security problem in South Sudan and Sudan. So if Isaias continues to destabilize the region, the security crisis will be a crisis to the international political establishment. So, uh, so uh, removing Isaias Aforki will be uh, a responsibility to build democracy and support the people's struggle for self-determination. So the international community as well as T Tigray should, be, should have a leading role in this uh, political engagement because Tigray is a victim of Isaias Afork's political establishment. So we should not refrain from um, actively supporting the Eritrean political forces. We should not uh, refrain from actively removing Isaias Afork from power because the passive engagement to Eritrea gave a chance for Isaias Afork to destabilize Tigray and Zohor. And Tigray is a victim. And we have enough reason to uh, remove Isaias Afork from his power. In the first place, he violates the territorial integrity of Tigray. He committed genocide against Tigray. He becomes a security threat to the Horn. And even nowadays, the Ethiopians are also sensing, uh, they are also vowing that Isaias Afork is a problem to his Ethiopian establishment. And he is creating havoc, uh, upheaval in the Horn of Africa so that this political crisis will evolve, will be creating a fertile ground for terrorists anti-establishment forces in the Horn of Africa. So the fate of Eritrea will be, for me, Isaias should be removed. And the second phase should be supporting the Eritrean democratic forces so that to establish a democratic uh, government in Eritrea. And that government should not be a problem to Tigray's political ambition. You know, we should, uh, we should be stressed 
uh, in our engagement towards Eritrea. We should not uh, refrain from uh, actively engaging in Eritrea's political uh, establishment. You know, Eritrea for me is an internal issue to Tigray. As it says, Afrika said that the Ethiopian issue is an internal issue to Eritrea. Now it becomes clear that the issue uh, Tigray is an internal issue to Eritrea, and Eritrea is also an internal issue for Tigray. Uh, Therefore, we have to actively engage in Eritrea to support the democratic transition. And then we should uh, also uh, find international and regional supporters for this. Uh, finally, what will be the way out for Tigray from this highly complicated situation in the region? Uh, you know, Tigray has been a victim of its own civilization. Tigray was uh, the home of uh, religion, culture, resistance, and geopolitics in the Horn of Africa. Unfortunately, it has repeatedly become a victim. Now, uh, the way out could be, in the first place, the, the defeating the genocidal regimes, uh, as well as stopping the genocidal war against Tigray will be the priority. Defeating the genocidal regimes um, of Abiy Ahmed in Siyas Afork and the expansion of Amhara, and stopping the genocide. The other way out could be Tigray should claim itself that. That is, it should be one of the political and security center in the Horn of Africa. Tigray uh, claim itself to be one of the military and political center in the Horn order. Uh, the other one is Tigray should avoid isolation and peripheral role uh, engagement in the Horn of Africa, believing that Tigray is a region, is part of the Ethiopia's territorial integrity. Now, because of the genocidal war, the crisis issue is beyond Ethiopia. It's beyond Eritrea. It's become an international agenda. So we should not refrain. We should not uh, sit idle uh, that the crisis is region. So we have to deal our problems through uh, Abiy Ahmed's uh, foreign policy. This should not be a solution. We, we should develop active foreign policy that fits the crisis existing problem. Uh, the other one is uh, active engagement in the red sea politics. Active engagement in the red sea politics uh, means SS Africa becomes a problem not only to Tigray, but also to the neighboring and support powers. So Tigray should devise an active engagement in the Red Sea. You know, the Red Sea becomes a secret threat to Tigray. But the Red Sea is part of Eritrea, it's obvious, but the political problem in Eritrea is directly or indirectly affecting Tigray's uh, political existence. Uh, the other one is Active engagement in Eritrea and politics is the other way out. Uh, as I have stated uh, earlier, Eritrea is not as such uh, far from Tigray's politics. It's part of, we should make it our internal issues because the Eritreans, they made it, uh, the Tigray issue is an internal issue. So Tigray also maximize, maximum utilization of geopolitical and geocultural environment. Tigray, I believe that Tigray is ideally important in this geopolitical framework. Tigray is a strategic transit to Eritrea as well as Ethiopia. You know, Ethiopia's geo, geo strategy is towards the Red Sea. So if Ethiopia wants to have access to the Red Sea, it has to positively treat Tigray. So Tigray is on the strategic transit. Eritrea's strat geopolitical, uh, um, geostrategical position is towards the south. You know, Tigray has um, uh, this strategical depths, so Tigray should maximize its geopolitical position. Tigray is at the core of the geopolitical establishment, so sh sh it should actively engage in Eritrea, in Ethiopia, in the Horn, and uh, uh, it also develop uh, strategic ambition. It, uh, it has to develop a strategic ambition. That means Tigray has to mobilize the force of self-determination in the Horn of Africa, you know? In the, today we are facing the coalitions of unitary political establishment, the coalition of fascists, the coalitions of genocidal regimes in the Horn. So Tigray has to search for uh, self-determination forces so that it can challenge the upcoming uh, Greater Ethiopia, Greater Eritrea, or Greater Somali Mentara so that the self-determination forces will be forces for democratic transition, forces that would support the struggle against militarism, fascism, and genocidal. 
Thank you very much, Marosa Zahaye, for talking to us and for your time, for your analysis. Hope to talk to you uh, on another issue. Thank you very much again. Thank you. That's it from us here uh, on Hard Talk. Thank you very much for watching. Until we see you next time, take care.